Hello all, uh, practitioner here again. Um, I was reading the um, website for Carpe Diem BC when um, something that they in particular look at uh, caught my eye. Um, again, this is for any members of Carpe Diem BC who might happen to be watching this. Um, one, of course, is the fact that where you say there's no space aliens. Um, good thing you clarified it. Uh, good thing they clarified it down lo uh, lower on on the website too. Um, but uh, the very initial phrasing where they say like uh, any more than there's God, uh, there is no God. There's no uh, any more than there's Santa Claus or space aliens. Um, space aliens near Earth would probably be the best uh, way to uh, to express that. Uh, according to the Drake equation. Um, Again, given likely factors, number of stars that uh, would be able to have planets that could support life right now, there would probably be up to 10,000 uh, civilizations as a conservative number in our own galaxy alone at any one particular time. So, um, again, not, uh, not space aliens, just space aliens near Earth would probably be a better amendment for that. But that's, I digress. Um, they talked about extraordinary claims, and they were talking about uh, the idea of not believing in mystical forces and taking responsibility over one's life. Well, here's the thing which gets me about this. Now, the thing is, again, I've already expressed before uh, my own personal opinion, given the research that I've seen, uh, especially given this whole experimenter bias thing, that, um, you know, considering that even the best um, controlled, even that the best controlled studies on both the believers and the skeptic side, that the reason that there apparently seems to be lack of replication is this so-called experimenter bias issue. And the thing is that gets me about this, and now, I, again, I'm not. Again, I'm still saying further research is needed before we can actually determine one way or the other. But there is a logical question that comes to mind: If there have been a series of relatively well-controlled experiments with some replications by believers, and there have been collaborative work, as I've cited in previous videos, like experimenter side effects, final data. Um, studies which were done in collaboration, where skeptics and believers used both the same identical controls and uh, same identical control statistical results, what, uh, you know, statistical testing formats, what have you, but, and the believers found effects, but skeptics did not, and they were of equal controls, but the only difference was that the subjects knew that the experimenter was a skeptic or a believer, then my question is, well, if the controls are equally good, and uh, now, I mean, I know that the people have said, oh, experimenter bias looking for things that aren't really there. Well, if the same statistical techniques have been used, and if computerization or what have you, if they've been used the exact same statistical te uh, tests and everything, um, and everything was exactly the same, then where would the experimenter bias have come in to, um, then where would, the, where would the bias have been able to come in uh, to, uh, you know, cause people to, uh, say for example, in the, um, in the psychic staring uh, tests, where would that uh, issue have come in uh, to get people to, uh, you know, drop their um, their fight or flight reactions more? I mean, the fact is, though, is that they even determined that that particular issue could not have affected the first two tests where they got significant results for the believer, uh, Merrill and Schlitz. And the problem still remains that um, that I mean, if the controls were good enough that the uh, that the skeptic didn't find anything, but the believer did. And they both had taken part in the statistical tests and what have you, and there was uh, no way. And the and the times that the um, that the experimenters were staring at the subjects were randomized, again, and no sensory data could come in on either direction. Then how you know in terms of feedback or what have you, if it was all kept you know no feedback, then how did the bullet? Then how did the subjects still have the statistically significant drop with the believers? Again, so my logical conclusion from this, now note again, this is just my logical hypothesis based on this, that letting the subjects know that you were a believer or a skeptic caused them to perform better or worse, that, uh, that this actually uh, caused an effect in the subject, and that the subject actually, that, the, that something like ESP uh, would be more likely than not, like probably did exist, and that um, the, or, or that it's possible that it was more likely than not, and that these exper that these subjects were performing um, at statistically significant levels for believers, but were performing at chance levels for skeptics because they knew they were being tested by skeptics, and they would want to inadvertently conform to experimenters' results. Hence, why I'm saying we need to find better tactics for testing for uh, out of experimenter bias. Um, now, uh, the main issue which I wanted to get on uh, was about um, taking control of one's life. Now here's the thing, and this is the thing which I'd like to point out about parapsychology. Um, I'd say that parapsychology in its own right is not a pseudoscience. 
Uh, the belief in psychic phenomena has been corrupted by pseudoscientists, cracks, cranks of all, of all sorts. But I'd say that the actual research into parapsychology is not a pseudoscience. Uh, even Rand, James Randi himself uh, once said that it's not really a pseudoscience. It technically does have the trappings of modern science. Like, it is a research science. It's just that he believes that there isn't really anything there to find. Now, again, that's his opinion. You know, again, there's still a lot of controversy over the actual results. Again, I've stated before, further research is needed. But, and I am still something of uh, an open-minded skeptic on that. But anyway, I digress. My main point is, though, is this is just a hypothetical here. And this is the, uh, my main concern is the argument of, um, of some that belief in, uh, or at least some that I've talked to, in that the belief that uh, para like the psychic phenomena would automatically be associated with mysticism, you know, life after death, or, uh, or uh, belief in a higher power, or you know, automatically uh, renouncing your own um, capability by believing in some sort of supernatural force. Well, here's my thought on this. Think about now. Remember those studies that were done a while back, and the ones that are still being done with the intention experiment, the global consciousness project, the um, uh, Helmut Schmidt's work, the other replications at MIT and Stanford. Um, you know, again, there's apparently some other studies that were done, not just the ones that pair. Now, regardless of that, here's my thought. If this intention does exist, and if we could, in some way, um, you know, influence the universe, uh, just uh, you know, influence the uh, you know the universe line that we were going into, or influence uh, you know the results that were coming up, or what have you, due to you know our mental intuition, what have you, right? And if there were, say, a limited effect on this, well, theoretically speaking, wouldn't it behoove us to um, wouldn't it behoove us to try to uh, you know, and again, if if we were able to affect random data or even affect some events, you know, at, at micro levels, wouldn't it behoove us to um, maintain collective um, intention towards good in events, intention towards space colonization, intention towards maintaining our society? And even if you think about it on a on a nor on a non paranormal level, if you if you actually did think that you know that by that by focusing your intention out there. Uh, either through normal causes like uh, affecting the world through, well, through something equivalent to experiment or bias, i.e., you know, your body language could affect someone else by trying to think about more positive thoughts out there. You know, you convey that in your body language. Or if there is some micro-psychokinetic effect, who knows? But the thing is that wouldn't that be a behoovement on you to take more responsibility with your life? If anything, that would benefit a secular humanist approach or an agnostic approach. If, again, I'm saying hypothetically if it existed, that would actually take more benefit in light of the fact that, um, you know, it would it would empower, uh, I mean, heck, even a belief in it, whether it existed or not, again, assuming that you're not, you know, trying to take it to macro levels, and you understand that it would just be like on minor levels of probability or one or two events every now and again, nothing major like, you know, trying to move objects with your mind, which, again, is physically impossible, um, you know, even if, if that were true, if you even believe that for a second, that would put the onus on you to start doing more with your life. It would start giving the onus on you to use your critical thinking, to use your mind more so to try to help out your fellow man in the world, like I've been trying to say through all my videos here. Well, if anything, I'm going to take that approach of it being more likely than not, whether it exists or not, until further data comes in one way or the other, just so this way I can take more responsibility for my actions. Anyway, that's just my hypothetical thought on it. Again, please do leave um, your comments as usual. Uh, again, please try to avoid ad hominem attacks or critical thinking fallacies. Um, I really would, I, I appreciate intelligent comments on my videos that I can actually have some thought to chew out to respond to or to ask questions on or for clarification or stuff. But when it's just ad hominem attacks or, or, or straw manning me or, um, or, you know, or, uh, or misconstruals or relatively simple stuff like that, it really, really, um, doesn't make my day worthwhile. It's it's just, you know, it, it makes me lose heart in the skeptical movement, you know, my fellow skeptics, and it makes me think that critical thinking is not as far spread as it should be, okay? Like I said, please do try to present reasoning in your arguments, because then it actually gives me a challenge to think about. Otherwise, uh, toodles, keep up the critical thinking.